Welcome back. A lot happened in the NBA this last week, including a massive franchise-altering trade. And who better to tell us all about it than the guy who's in first place in fantasy basketball? Alex, take it away. Thank you for bringing that up. I am in first place. I am 4-0. The only undefeated team left. James is 3-1. and one. Uh, Trading, what, what are you doing over here? Where are you? You 2-2. Two two. That's not too shabby. Yeah. Not too shabby. Tyler, 1-3. and three. At the <laughs> Almost yeah. bottom, bottom yeah. of the pack there. Shit. Uh, you might have to change your team name. But yeah, I think so. Yeah, just so, yeah, that's just what's going on in fantasy. Gotta change something. Yeah, you gotta have to change something up. (laughs) But yeah, as James alluded to, a big trade in the NBA. James Harden finally left the Rockets. Uh, Houston Sports is just imploding around, you know, they're just falling apart. Uh, But I'm not gonna get into everything that went down in the trade because it was with like four different teams and it's a bunch of craziness. But pretty much James Harden goes to the Rocket, uh, to the Nets, Karis Levert. Then goes to the Pacers, and Victor Oladipo goes to the Rockets. Harris LeVert, then, as he's doing his physical, there's a mass on his kidney, so he's out indefinitely. So the Pacers kind of got fucked a little bit. But at the same time, uh, kind of a good thing for Karis LeVert because now he can deal with that accordingly. Um, other than that, we hope he's okay. Uh, but for right now, we're going to focus on James Harden moving to the Eastern Conference and to the Nets already, obviously with Kevin Durant and sort of Kyrie Irving. Kyrie has missed the last handful of games. Um, you know, there was rumors that he would retire or that the Nets wouldn't bring him back. It looks like he is going to come back, uh, which is good because he's on my fantasy team. So I need him to come back, even though I'm four now. Um, but Eric, so James Harden, we're as a collective group, I would say not the biggest fan of James Harden on this podcast. Uh, he does. He does go to a Nets team that you had ranked at the top of your power rankings for a good portion of the year. Uh, is James Harden to the Nets? Does that now make them the favorite to win the East? Yes, definitely does. Um, tonight, thirty-four, twelve, and six. Tonight, just beat the Bucks that you all have. I think above the Nets. Uh, tonight said he's the happiest he's ever been in this league. Um, I think he's a good guy now. It all it took, you know, was like two weeks for him to get traded. But um, he's getting into his rhythm. He's played with Durant, who I think is probably the most clutch player in the league currently. Um, He's played multiple seasons with him before. I think Kyrie not playing. I feel like Durant kind of, you know, pulled the trigger and said, all right, let's get him. Let's get him over here. Um, I think he meshes and fits in well with that team. And they kind of just became one of the toughest teams in the league now with him getting there. I think he's not going to be as selfish as we think he'll be like he was with the Rockets. So he's a great addition for that team who was already pretty stacked. They're going to be tough to be in the East. Uh, Assuming Kyrie does come back, are you worried that there are now three guys who need the ball in their hands a lot, which doesn't typically work out that well for NBA teams sometimes? Um. Yeah, it, there'll be something weird at first for them. Um, I don't I don't really know if Kyrie's going to come back this season. It's kind of weird, man. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I do know that he's, you know, he gets in his head a lot. I don't, like I said, I don't really know what the fuck is going on. I don't know if he is returning this season. I think it's another big reason they pulled the trigger on getting Harden over there. But if Kyrie does come back, it's going to be a little weird at first, and uh, they're going to have to learn how to share. I think they're all okay with Durant having the ball in the end of the game for that last shot. I would, I would think so. Uh, tonight, he actually passed it to Harden, who was open. Harden took the shot, missed it, got his own rebound, passed it back to Durant, who made the game-winning shot. So, you know, it's it'll be it'll be tough at first, but they'll be they'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, James, the fact that James Harden actually got his own rebound already shows that he's trying more because that's not something <laughs> he would have done in Houston. Yeah. Um, and the, I think the funniest thing is, I know it's probably just like camera angles and stuff, but if you look at his last picture in Houston compared to his first picture in Brooklyn, he literally looks like he lost 20 pounds in about three days. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. No, he, yeah, he does. I don't know. Maybe it's the color it's scheme or something. Yeah, who knows? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's obviously a huge pickup. James Harden is a great player. I'm a little worried uh, because James Harden has never been known for his defense. Kyrie's not that great of a defender. KD can be a good defender, but, you know, he takes some possessions off sometimes. 
Um, and the trades that they made, they lost a lot of defense. Um, and as we know, defense wins championships. That's why I still have the Bucks ranked above the Nets. I think the Bucks have an elite defense. Um, you know, obviously they did lose the Nets tonight, but I think those are probably the two best teams in the East moving forward. Um, and then with James Harden now moving on, I think there's some other names that could possibly be moving on to um, and trading. I, we kind of talked about this a little bit. So Bradley Beal yep. of the Washington Wizards, uh, Russell Westbrook is out with a quad injury and the Wizards are struggling. And then Carl Anthony Towns, he did just uh, test positive for COVID, <laughs> but the Timberwolves are also struggling and those guys both can help elite teams. Um, do you see these guys, you know, kind of being the next superstars to get moved? Yeah. I mean, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with, with Beal. Um, the, the Wizards are not, you know, playing, they're, they're struggling pretty big. And he's, he's, uh, you know, I think that he actually being available because I think that he, that he wants his way out. I think that he actually had a lot to do with what the, the Nets, or I'm sorry, what the, what Houston got in return for, for Harden. I, I think that Harden, I think that that trade, you know, they held out to make that trade with, uh, with, uh, the Nets for, for a while. We remember that. I mean, I think this trade has been out kind of in the, in the works for a while and, and no one bought. You know, no one bought in. No one, no one bid above. You know what the what the nets. Uh, you know what the nets were giving, and I think that 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 kind of shows that there are other teams that see other options other than Harden, and I think that he's one of those options. Um, you know, f- you know, Philly was able to give up was uh, was willing to give up Ben's. I can see Philly being an option here. Um, you know, we don't, and we. I guess we don't know for sure when he's going to be available, but um, you know. I, I think that he's definitely, uh, you know, on the, on the, um, on the speculation. Um, so, you know, I, he, he, there's nothing to indicate that, that, that the deal's there, but I think that he's definitely a player that's going to be looked at. Um, so I don't know what you think you probably, you brought him up. So I think that yeah. he's, uh, you know, I think that he's kind of the front runner, my, you know? Yeah. I mean, Bradley Beal has been unbelievable this season. Um, I don't know if he still is, but, it, you know, a good point of the season, he was leading the league in scoring. Um, he's been on the rumor mill of being traded for the last, I don't know, year and a half or so. That Wizards team was so close a couple of times to kind of breaking through when with a healthy John Wall and Bradley Beal and all these guys. And it didn't work, and they kind of blew it up, and they kind of needed to just start over. Um, he's an elite scorer, and it'll be interesting to see if he does finally get dealt. Um, what do you think about – Car Anthony Towns. Do you yeah. Think, so now that he has has the Rona, does that affect if someone would trade for him? I, I don't know. I mean, I, that kind of you know that that kind of thing is is obviously short term, and and it's for for this guy, you're looking you're looking for a you're looking for not only a, an immediate solution, but also he's under contract for three more seasons, so he's going to be part of your organization for the next you know this year plus two more, right? So, yeah. um, you know. Minnesota, you know, tried to build around towns. I mean, they, they secured D'Angelo Russell um, and, you know, they took in this first round pick um, in what was, what was his name? I'm sorry. Uh, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. And they just haven't really sparked. Right. And I, and, and so I would not be surprised if, if, you know, towns looks for, looks for a way out. Um, you know, I see Miami as an option. If, if Miami hasn't found some, I think Miami's, you know, looking to, to build or looking to bring in some, some high end talent. And, you know, if they don't find someone, I think the car, I think that towns is definitely an option here. Um, you might also see the um, OKC New Orleans may, um, you know, those pick quarters might be uh, finding options to trade some picks for, for a player like towns. Um, I, I think it's kind of a wait and see um, and maybe it'll be up to him too. I mean, I, I don't know if, if, you know, it, it may be up to him to see if, if something can spark, but you know, maybe Minnesota looks at it this way and says, you know, there's nothing here. Um, but I will say that I think that an, an interesting trade that you, or an interesting trade option that you didn't bring up what, would be actually Kyle Lowry, just given the case, just given the fact that the Raptors are not really doing very well right now. And he's only one year left on his deal. So, and he's the kind of player that he's, he's the most, you know, he's the most impactful player for the, for the Raptors in franchise history currently, you know, given the fact that he's been, you know, he's won a championship with them. He's consistently been a, been a producer for this team. I think that he, 
it also has the ability to, to, you know, go on to different, you know, find it, find a spot in a different team that is looking to just find that extra player to, you know, get him to the finish line. So I, I think Kyle Lowry is someone that we definitely need to keep an eye on to. Yeah, that's a really good point. Kyle Ra- Lowry could move. That would be kind of a heartbreaker for Raptors fans. It would, 100%. Would like a long, you know, one of the longest tenured guys. Um, yeah, Cat would be really interesting if he got traded because they, they've tried to build around him. They brought Jimmy Butler and that didn't work. D'Angelo Russell, Andrew Wiggins, all these guys. And it just, nothing has seemed to work. But Carl Anthony Towns has been a monster. He's a superstar, but it just hasn't worked with him in Minnesota. I don't know what it is, but yeah, Miami, New Orleans would be a really interesting team if they got Carl Anthony Towns. Um, we'll just have to see. I think some of these guys could be traded. Some of them will stay. Um, we've kind of been focusing on the East, but let's move out West. Tyler, as our resident Lakers fan, you're rocking that purple quarter zip or whatever it is down there. Um, the Lakers and the Clippers already look like the two best teams in the Western Conference. Um, you know, we talked about it last year. We thought it was a Western Conference Finals seven game series. It was inevitable. Obviously, that didn't happen. Is it already inevitable this year? I think it's way too early to to call that. Um, I think no question the Lakers and the Clippers are the two top dogs in the Western Conference, and those are the two teams to beat. Um, and I think a lot of us want to see that happen this year. I think we all wanted it to happen last year, that, that conference championship matchup between the, the, the two LA teams. And I hope it does, but I, uh, I don't know if that's a hundred percent certain. I think the Western conference is still pretty deep. Um, there's two other teams in my mind that are close to that level. Um, and that would be the Utah Jazz and the Phoenix Suns. We mentioned the Phoenix Suns last week on the podcast. I think this team's pretty legit. Um, I think they're a team that's going to that's gonna scare a lot of people. Um, and they're playing some good competition coming up these next few games. I, I, I think they play the Mavs like three times in the next two weeks or something like that. So um, I think we'll be playing a lot better competition. They've had a pretty easy schedule of late, so we'll see how they – there through these next couple of weeks and maybe my opinion might change on that um but the, the utah jazz have been an up-and-coming team I, I think that's a very very good team that that could shock some of those upper upper two teams um so I, for, for me i think it's definitely lakers clippers top two but uh the kind of the lower tier top two or that that makes the top four would be the utah jazz and the phoenix suns but then you got you know a a, a lot of teams that are kind of in that middle ground you know Portland, uh, the Spurs, Mavs, uh, Memphis, Denver, that are all in there, um, and they can make some noise too. I don't; they're definitely not as elite and as great as those two LA teams. But I mean, this is the Western Conference, and it's the Wild Wild West for a reason. Um, I, I, th- I think the one bummer with the with those top four that I mentioned is they don't really play each other a whole lot. I know the Lakers don't play the Clippers the rest of the season. Um, they're not playing the Suns until like I think the second to last game of the season. Um, I think the teams in general, I was, kind of, I was looking at everyone's schedules and they don't really play each other. I think maybe once um, they play each other, um, which is kind of a bummer. I think I would like to see, you know, unfortunately, just the way the schedule is this, this season, we don't get to see uh, some of those games. But uh, so it'll be interesting to see come playoff time, you know, with not a lot of um, matchups in the regular season, how they will fare. But um, yeah, for me, I mean, Lakers Clippers is what I want, but I'm not banking on it. I think it's far too early to really tell how the Western conference pictures is going to play out. But, uh, but as I mentioned, I, I, I think the, the jazz and the Suns are two teams that I think have a legit shot of possibly winning the, the Western conference. Yeah. I mean, it is really too early to tell. I was just curious on whether you thought that it was, you know, obviously it's not a done deal. We thought it was a done deal last year. And then the Clippers kind of get shocked by the nuggets Um, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, but it, it, I agree with you. It does feel like those, the two LA teams are easily the best in the Western conference. I'm still not a hundred percent sold. I think the Suns are good. I'm not sure if I can full on call them a contender yet. Um, they've only played, they only got to play one game this week, uh, because of COVID. Um, and then they got blown out by the wizards. I'm pretty sure. Um, they are kind of a team that plays well against good teams and then poorly against bad teams. And I think that has a lot to do with their youth. I mean, other than Chris Paul, that team's really young and they kind of play down to shit teams and play well for better teams. Uh, the jazz though. Yeah. They're, they're legit. Um, 
I could see them making a Western Conference Finals for sure. Uh, though, I mean, the West is just ridiculous. Like, I was looking through it, and, I mean, probably other than the Kings and the Timberwolves, 13 of those teams could realistically make the playoffs, where in the East, eight teams are going to make it, but there's really only about five of them that have a real shot. Um, so, yeah, the West, whoever comes out of the West is going to be battle-tested for sure. Um, and it'll be, yeah, and we'll just we'll have to see what happens. Uh, last question. So there are some surprise teams currently in playoff spots in the Eastern Conference now. And two, I would say two surprise teams that have started off really poorly. So James, let's start off with the surprise teams. The Cavs, the Hornets, and the Knicks are all in or around a playoff spot right now. Are any of these teams going to continue this run, make the playoffs, or is this just like kind of a Cinderella beginning to the season for them? Uh, of the three teams you mentioned, I think the yeah. two teams that have the highest, like the more, more chances of making the playoffs this year are the Hornets and the Knicks. Um, I'll start with the Hornets first. The Hornets are currently six and eight. They beat some good teams. They beat the Nets when the Nets are fully healthy. This is before Spencer did move towards ACL. That's like, that, that was a good team. That was right at the beginning. And we thought that they were the real deal back then. Uh, they've also beat the Hawks as well. Like they beat some good teams and they lost to some good teams. Uh, overall, though, they're a pretty good all-around team. They have three-point shooting, they're passing, they have interior scoring, they have rebounding. They're good all the way around. They have seven players that have that played 25 plus minutes per game, so you know it's a total team effort. And those like that's almost starter minutes right there. Lamelo Ball isn't a starter, but he plays 27 minutes a game. Um, scoring is distributed pretty evenly too. Hayward is the only person that has 20 plus points per game, which means if somebody has an off night, somebody's going to step up and fill that void. It's a team effort. And they're also a very young team led by Gordon Hayward. And Gordon, Gordon Hayward's a good leader. If you guys remember, he had that pretty catastrophic injury, has faced a lot of adversity. And stuff like that typically turns you into a good leader because you can relate to other people and you're able to manifest stuff and bring stuff forward that people might not have. Like those stories of working through things and doing it for the love of the game, that makes you a good leader. These, this team gets better and better with every minute because they're so young. And they're going to continue to do it throughout the season. So they might squeeze in. But the team that I really think is going to make it in the playoffs, and that's the New York Knicks. They're seven and eight right now. They beat good teams, but they lose to bad teams. So right now, it's kind of like fix your mentality, fix your perspective, and you'll have a better record. This is Coach Tom Thibodeau's first year as the head coach at, of the New York Knicks, but he's a good coach. He's coached for eight years, and he's has he's made the playoffs six of those eight years of the teams he's coached. He has more wins than he has losses. He's a defensive coach. He's known for his hard coaching style and that's pushed him out of a lot of places but I think for a Knicks team in New York that kind of culture that's going to be good for them the biggest thing here is the emergence of Julius Randle like that guy right now he's averaging a double double and that's not something we saw when he was in LA he was kind of like an okay player when he was with the Lakers but now he's one of the best players in the league it's hard work it's determination it's all paying off right now on top of that you have RJ Barry who's entering his second year he's, he's close to averaging a double double too he's becoming a better player each and every game you also have Alfred Payton and Mitchell Robinson, all really good role players. This team, the New York Knicks, reminds me of the, the Golden Knights in the NHL. It's kind of like a ragtag group of players that nobody really wanted, but they're out there playing their hearts out each and every game because they have something to prove. And I think that's what's going to kind of force them and drive them into that playoff slot. I mean, I just I – can't, I can't see it with any three of these teams yet. It's still too early – like the fact that you just said the sentence where you think the Knicks can make the playoffs doesn't really like compute in my brain like that. It doesn't make sense. It's like, <laughs> it's like the Mariners making the playoffs. Like none, it doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah. Or the Weren't Browns. They, they had like the a winning streak at the beginning, didn't they? The Mariners? Of last season. Yeah. They're doing yeah. really well for a little bit. And yeah, then Tyler was like, like yeah. And, two, and then they lost like every game after that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It, yeah, I mean, one of these teams is probably going to make it because the East is terrible. Uh, you know, they're really top-heavy, and then the rest of them just will beat up on each other. Um, you know, it is it is good for basketball when the Knicks are good because they're obviously a big market team. Um, they, you know, they play in New York. They play MSG, all this stuff. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, moving on to two other teams in the East that are started off poorly. Uh, Trade mentioned earlier the Toronto Raptors are not doing well to start the season. And the team that made it to the NBA Finals and took the Lakers to six games, the Miami Heat, um, they're both well below 500 right now. Um, 
are these just slow starts for teams that didn't get, you know, a, uh, a normal off season or are they in trouble already? I really hope it's a slow start because the NBA is better when the heat and that intensity and that coach is are playing well. Actually, the Raptors, I think this is when it starts to go downhill for them. Um, they've been in a lot of games, but uh, you guys were talking about earlier how there's like the most clutch player in the NBA and whatnot. I think Pascal Siakam is the least clutch player in the NBA. He's had so many potential game winners that he's just missed. It's one possession game is to give him the ball because he's the guy in Toronto now, but he misses. And that's and he needs to figure that out. Um, I mean, it's not always on him. The fact of the matter is you shouldn't be in one possession games if you're the, this good of a team. But they're, it, for some reason, something's not clicking. They're not doing it. I think it's right now. Trade mentioned that Kyle Lowry might get traded. And, hey, man, like it could be a possibility. If they don't fix something soon, get rid of that cap, get it some draft picks, get some role players, fill the void, work, work with that. As for the Heat, it's so crazy because I feel like they've lost their intensity. They're kind of resting on their laurels right now and being like, hey, we went to the finals. We took the Lakers to six games. So, like, yeah, we're good. But they haven't shown it this year at all. Like, bam, bam was supposed to be the next big thing. Where has he been all season? He hasn't been playing. That's for damn sure. I know Jimmy's been on and off hurt and whatnot, but he's been healthy as of late. So, pick it up. But it's just something's not clicking there. I don't know if it's like they need a culture change. Something big needs to happen. But they need to figure it out fast if they want to stay in this playoff race. Yeah, I I don't want to agree with you, but I'm going to. Um, I think Toronto's time is done. They've ha- they had a really great run. Um, they probably would have made a lot more NBA Finals if it wasn't for LeBron James. I mean, they f- it felt like they lost he they lost to him every single year while he was playing for the Cavs, like that second stint with the Cavs. Uh, yeah, Toronto, it, it, they could blow it up. They probably should. Miami feels like they're going to go out and get one of these guys that could possibly be dealt um, and just maybe some new fresh blood in there. I mean, the team for a team that made the NBA finals, it's it, honestly pretty incredible how much that team is stuck together. Like they had almost zero turnover from one year to the next, which is crazy when you look at like the team, like the Lakers who obviously won, it seems like their entire roster changed except for like three guys. Um but I, so I think the Heat have a good chance to come back, but it, it might be over in Toronto and it might be time to blow it up and start it all over. Um, either way, crazy NBA season so far. Games are still getting canceled. Um, players are still getting positive tests. But, uh, you know, we talked about it last week. It seems like they're just going to keep pushing ahead. And if teams don't have enough guys to suit up, we'll go from there and figure it out. But um, it's a crazy NBA season. But, uh, James, that's all I got. All right. We're a little under a fifth of the way down with the NBA season, but it feels like something big is happening every single week. Alex, fantastic job, man. Learned a lot there. 